Today we'll be talking about Deborah, a strong woman, and uh, she, you know, she was one of the judges of Israel. And uh, I'm really excited to dive into this topic with her. And speaking of women, let me shout out my crew up here today because I have an all-female camera crew. <laughs> I have Lynette here, I have Miriam, and I have Carol. Shout out to all the ladies doing their things out there. And can I get an oh yeah? <laughs> that's right all right but uh, we're going to have our pastor here his name is pastor jay blessed he'll be uh introducing uh, um deborah's character to us and really just diving into some of the lessons that we can draw from her life but with that said uh let's begin with a word of prayer all right Sadiq? father in jesus name we thank you so much for this day thank you for the gift of life Many would have wished to see this day, but they were unable. But because of your grace and your mercy, we are here. So we give you thanks and praise. Thank you for this opportunity to minister to your people through full circle. May you use us as vessels to the honor and glory of your name. May we have a good show. May we have an awesome time in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 All right. So let's take a look at our scripture for the day. Like I mentioned, today we'll be considering Deborah. And our scripture, we're going to be looking at Judges chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. And this is what it says. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in, this, in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israels went up to her to have their disputes decided. Wow. I, th I think even just reading that scripture alone kind of already paints a portrait of the sort of woman that this was. And I think one of the things that really stands out about it is this, it was a woman doing this sort of role in that time period. Mm. Um, so maybe you can just begin by giving us a little bit of a background mm. as to Deborah's story. I would like to begin the story from uh, Moses. Let me pick it up from Moses. Sure. Uh, he's a major character we all know. God has sent him to Egypt he has delivered the children of Israel from Egypt. They have been brought through the Red Sea. Uh, near the end of Moses' uh, time and ministry, God indicates to him that I have a successor for you. So Joshua is raised up. And Joshua now leads the children of Israel into the promised land. Mm -hmm. However, as uh, the ministry of Joshua and the life of Joshua come to an end, the Bible indicates there is no uh, apparent uh, successor to Joshua uh, as, as, as an individual. Mm -hmm. So from Joshua, God begins to raise different judges, uh, people whom the Lord would raise so that the children of Israel would be delivered from the oppression of the enemy when they were in Canaan. The children of Israel, the scripture says, they would fall into sin, they would fall into uh, forsaking the Lord, and because of that, God would give them over or hand them over into the hands of oppressors. So the Bible does record uh, uh, three judges before we come to Deborah. Okay. It begins with Othniel, the son of uh, the brother of uh, Caleb. Mm -hmm. It goes to the second one of Ehud, a second judge, and then Shamga. Shamga is the third uh, judge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then now we come to Deborah. Okay. So when we look at Deborah, she, she's unique, as you said, because she's a woman. Yeah. And, that, and that's very, very unique because we'll touch in, in uh, that later. Okay. The lady, the word Deborah means a bee. A bee. A bee. The name Deborah means bee. Okay. And when I looked at the Matthew Henry commentary, he made something, he makes a very strange statement about her. He says, Deborah lived up to her name because she is industrious as a bee. Mm -hmm. She's sweet to her friends mm -hmm. and she has a sting to her enemies. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So the Bible introduces uh, certain things about Deborah in one particular passage. It says, Deborah, a prophetess. Mm -hmm. And the, the aspect of being prophetic we have touched in this show uh, a couple of times and said that one of the lessons we need to pick even from Deborah is that God desires each and every of his children to develop a prophetic heart, yeah. a heart that can be able to be able to perceive what God is, is, is saying and doing, right. eyes that can be able to see, ears that can be able to hear. Yeah. And these are things that we need to desire as as uh, as people who are born again, mm -hmm. that Lord, that I may hear your voice, mm -hmm. Lord, that I may see, Lord, that I may perceive. Mm -hmm. 
we have said how Jesus kept on saying, I don't do anything until I see my father do it. Right. So in the style in which I see my father do it, I just duplicate that. I photocopy that on the face of the earth. What I hear my father say, that's what I, uh, what I say to you. So the aspect of being prophetic, we need to desire that as, as a people. Moses prayed uh, when Joshua was jealous about his ministry and says, oh, that God would raise the entire Israel to be prophets, mm -hmm. people who can hear him. So we see that with Deborah, okay. a prophetess. Okay. And she's not the only prophetess in the Bible. The Miriam is also a prophetess in the Bible. So let's move away from the prophetic. Mm -hmm. We come to number, uh, let me touch on number three. Okay. It says she was a judge. And there's the second one is the wife. But let me touch on the judge first. We see something very unique because there is, she's only the only woman mentioned as a judge in Israel. And when we talk about judge, we're talking about a career woman because right. that, that's, that's career. Yeah. That's politics. Yeah. Her being like a, an MCA, a governor, somebody who dealt with civil cases. Mm -hmm. Cases were brought to her because that's what judges would do. They would sort out the civil issues. But also her, as Deborah, she had a prophetic dimension because she's also a prophet. Right. So she's a career woman. And from Deborah, we begin to learn that it is God's desire. There are people who teach out there that the woman is supposed to be uh, just a homekeeper. Right. That is a portion of what God desires for the woman. But if you look at the model woman in Proverbs chapter 31, this is a lady who is able to manage her home. She's able to, to consider land and buy it. Yeah. She's a, a lady who is in business. She wow. sells uh, uh, her mitumba. She sells clothes. Yeah. She gathers them from far and sells them. Yeah. So we see Deborah as a career woman. She's a judge in, in Israel. She's wow. a career woman. Wow. Yes. I love that. And that's super encouraging, mm -hmm. I think, to every, and especially coming from a man who's a pastor, mm -hmm. <laughs> that women are allowed to work mm -hmm. and we're allowed to go out there and be industrious and, you know, build our families. Mm -hmm. If you're a lady watching the show, I'd love to hear what you think about that. Mm -hmm. Triple one, triple four, triple one. I'd also love to hear from the gentlemen, of course, as we continue to consider Deborah. And we're going to be back uh, with Pastor Jay Blessed here as we continue to draw on some more lessons from her life. So stay tuned. All right. Well, thank you to everybody that is watching Full Circle this morning. We do appreciate you. Shout out to you, Pastor Yulene, as well, who's watching. And on Facebook here, I have uh, Melissa Mulandi, Asante Sana, for tuning in from Nakuru. You say you really enjoy the show, Asante Sana, Barikiwe Pia. I have Dorcas Muadime, loving the show, from Taita, uh, Weruga, Brian Mukabwa, as well from Rironi Kiambu County. Thank you for watching. Sharon Mainandonga, Asante Sana for the compliments there and for watching. Dedan Juguna from Gilgil Town. I have Duncan uh, Kompanyi from Outer Soisambu. Uh, Waweru wa keyboard. <laughs> My dear Waweruwa keyboard, thank you for watching the show <laughs> from Naivasha. I have Joseph Mushiri from um, Mpigo, uh, Pinches, Kagume, and Jeremy Kipto as well. Thank you to all of you for watching the show this morning as well. We continue with our Bible character study this morning. We're looking at Deborah, uh, who uh, was a judge and a prophetess in Israel. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with Pastor Jay Blessed as we continue to consider her character. And uh, one of the things that you've brought out for us is that, you know, she was the only female judge in, in Israel, mm -hmm. a post which already for her to get it, I mean, that's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. And um, you were touching a little bit on this, this scripture, I guess, over time, a lot of people can kind of focus in on gender issues as far as, you know, what is the place of women as mm -hmm. far as church and leadership. Mm -hmm. But I think God himself made it clear that he can use women, mm -hmm. even in positions of authority. Mm -hmm. I want us to stretch that argument just a little bit to some of the other things. I think some of the other false teachings that we've received mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. far as women and mm -hmm. our place in society, mm -hmm. especially in a culture like ours that is still predominantly mm -hmm. patriarchal. Uh, thanks for that. Eh? I've just remember, uh, been reminded by the Holy Spirit. Eh? I'd like to say this very emphatically, that the only place where a man has been given uh, absolute uh, in terms of headship is the home. Mm. The home is where God now refers to the man as the head. Mm. 
but in every other aspect of life, every other industry, a woman can lead. Mm -hmm. So let me begin from the top. A woman can be president of a nation. That's right. A woman can be a governor, like we have. Mm -hmm. A woman can be an MCA. Mm -hmm. A woman can be a head of a ministry. Mm -hmm. So there is no place where a woman cannot lead. She can lead a company. Mm -hmm. She can lead every other place. The only place where God has not allowed the woman to lead has been the head, as in the, the final say, mm -hmm. is in the home only. If this woman was married to a man and she's a pastor, in the home context, she submits to the, to the husband. Right. But in the church, if her husband is a mushirika, the husband will submit to her. Mm. In the church? Yes, in the church. Mm. Wow. So that needs to be clearly understood. A woman can lead a ministry. She yeah. can lead a nation. She can lead a company. She can lead every other place yeah. and be the head apart from the home. Okay. When it comes to the home, God has reserved that to the man mm -hmm. and say, I'm calling on the man to be able to, to whatsoever mistake the wife makes the man at the end of the day, they say the back stops with you. Mm -hmm. So that comes to them. Okay. Now, when you go back to Genesis, we see that God says, I will make you a helpmate. Mm. Look at the assignment of, uh, of Adam. Surely we cannot reduce the woman to the place of the kitchen only because mm. Adam's uh, assignment was so large and so huge. Mm. Eve was not coming just to cook kideri uh, for him. Mm -hmm. God says, I'll make you a helpmate. This aspect of having domi dominion, subduing the earth, replenishing it, Eve was to come into every segment and help Adam do exactly that. Wow. Let me stretch it a bit more. When you look at the New Testament, Paul comes and preaches in a place and finds a lady called Lydia. Lydia mm -hmm. was a seller of purple. Mm -hmm. They preach to her the gospel, she gets saved, she comes into the kingdom of God. So, W w women are allowed yeah. to, to be career women just like we have seen in Deborah. Right. So let me move on to, the, to this aspect that is in the center because it says Deborah, a prophetess, mm -hmm. then the second aspect that I've jumped, and then the third one, a judge mm -hmm. in Israel. I want to now come to the third point, the one that is in the center. Deborah, a wife of Lapitoth. Right. Now I want to speak to my sisters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I come from a very large family. Mm -hmm. I have s s six sisters, six brothers. Wow. So. I want to speak to the women because we are in a generation where women don't want anything about marriage. Yeah. But from Deborah, we learn that you can be a prophetess, very strong prophetically. Yeah. You can be a career woman and, and excel uh, uh, in, in that yeah. and still be a wife. Come on. There are people who have taught and said that if a woman is strong in ministry, she must divorce or she must stay single. Mm. That's not true. Mm. We see in Deborah a strong prophet. We see in Deborah a strong civil leader, a mm. governor, a, le a, a president. But yet she's accepted to be married. She's a wife. Yeah. She's yeah. a wife. She's yeah. a wife. I speak to my sisters out there. Please let us not despise marriage. Let us not abuse marriage. Let us not dishonor marriage. Mm. Hebrews chapter 13 says marriage should be honored by all mm. because it's an institution that God himself began, mm. instituted, joined Adam and Eve together. So let's honor marriage. Yeah. Let's come out from that place where we, we have got such woundings and hearts in our heart because we saw our fathers beat our mothers mm. and we said, I will never never marry any other dog. Uh -uh. Mm. Man, not all men are dogs. Right. Uh -uh. Yeah. There is a place where God says marriage will be needed for in your life so that I can be able to do certain things for mm. you. Mm. Yes. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of encouragement from this from this lady Deborah mm. that really in, in many senses of the word as a woman as a young girl you can you can pursue whatever you yes. want mm. and God's blessing is upon you mm. um, so to every woman that has been told one thing or another or has always struggled with you know what are my skills and my giftings and can I go out there the world needs you to show up with your giftings mm -hmm. and to use them mm -hmm. and to apply them mm -hmm. because as you said Adam's success was very much linked to Eve being a good yes. help mate yes. so um, you know women rise up to you to, to take up your, your role but also mm. one woman <laughs> give your woman space uh, allow her to, to, to flourish in her potential because at the end of the day you shine too mm, because mm, of it. Mm, mm. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one that is what you have just touched on. And in Deborah we see teamwork because the Lord gives her prophetic words and says go to speak to, to Barak and tell him arise I want to use you in warfare to destroy the oppression of the enemy. Mm. 
So Barak speaks back to Deborah and says, if you will go with me, I will go to war. But if you don't go with me, I'm not going. Mm. So Deborah says, okay, I will go with you, but just know that the Lord will give the honor of this victory into the hands of a woman because yeah. you have insisted I go with you. So in Deborah, personally, I see a lady of teamwork mm -hmm. that she is given the prophetic word to, to Barak, but because Barak has requested of her presence. Mm -hmm. We need to understand where Barak is coming from. The scripture says in Judges that the Lord would raise up the judges and the Lord would be with the judges mm. so that the, uh, the oppression of the enemy would be broken. So Barak looks at Deborah as one who almost is like the Ark of the Covenant. You are carrying God's presence. Mm. If I go with you, I know God's going to be with me. Mm. Almost like the children of Israel who told uh, Elisha that you have sent us to cut wood so that we may expand our borders. Master, please go with us yeah. and says, I will go with you. Yeah. And you see the chaos that happened after the axe fell into the water. And because Elisha was there, he put a stick and the axe head did swim. Mm. So Barak is looking at Deborah from that perspective mm. that let me go with you because I know you are nearer to God than I am. Mm. Even though he has sent me, I need you. So in Deborah, we see a lady who is willing to have teamwork. And we need to come to that place and say, there's a certain input I'm going to give to the body of Christ, but I need my brother and I need my sister. That's and true. if we are called upon, we should not say, aha, learn the hard way. I also mm. learned the hard way. So, ka ngumu ka enda zako. <laughs> ah, no, we need, yeah. we need to support each other, help yeah. each other, and carry each other's burdens. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Um, some SMSs here as you also get ready to share some of your final points about Deborah. Um, uh, Humphrey from Naivasha, thank you for watching the show uh, as well. And uh, Flora from Thogoto, you're watching as well. Thank you for that. I know people are already sending in their requests and we'll be getting to those in a few moments. Triple one triple four triple one is the sms line for that you can also contact us on facebook at switch tv kenya and we'll be touching on that but as we get ready to finish here mm. uh you can uh, share any sort of other points you have about deborah i want to share this last one eh? and i'll read it from the scriptures judges chapter 5 6 and 7 in the days of shamga the son of An anath in the days of jail uh, the highways were unoccupied and the travelers walked uh, through byways the inhabitants of the villages ceased, they ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, arose. Mm. That I arose a mother in Israel. Mm. The last point I want to touch on and dwell a bit more is that last phrase of a mother in Israel. Mm. We in the body of Christ have had so much about fatherhood, 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 fatherhood. But I would like us to know this day that there is a place of motherhood. Mm. When we look at the life of uh, of Paul and Timothy. We see Paul being a father unto Timothy. He says, Timothy, my son, Timothy, my son, Timothy, my son. But there would be no Timothy, my son, if there was no a mother right. unto Timothy. Right. Paul in his writing says that he has had a, a lady called Eunice and a, a lady called Lois. Mm -hmm. One was a mother, one was a grandmother unto Timothy. Mm -hmm. And says, remember the faith that was in your mother and the faith that was in your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Those two women helped you come to a point where I, as Paul, by the time I'm coming, you are so strong in the faith, I can adapt you as my son, mm -hmm. we can move on in ministry. Mm -hmm. And I speak again to the women, where are the mothers in Israel? Mm -hmm. we, if we begin to, to, to look at what the enemy is doing, we'll be able to understand what God is also doing. We are in a day and an age where we're talking about slay queens, slay queens, slay queens. And the only thing they do is to slay. They just kill and kill and kill. But mm -hmm. God's design, God's intent is to raise up mothers. Mm -hmm. People who can, through prophetic grace, receive the burden of God, just yeah. like uh, Mary did, nurture it. Mm. Carried to full time without aborting it and begin to birth God's purposes. Wow. She says, I, Deborah, a mother in Israel. I was a mother in Israel. I guarded Israel. I kept Israel. We need more mothers today. Mm. I think it's Jeremiah who says, where are the wailing women? Or Isaiah, where are the wailing women of Israel? Where are these people who can take the posture that Elijah took and birth the reign? of God's restoration, the reign of God's presence and power. Mm. If you look at this portion of scripture we have read, Deborah cries out and says, in my time, the highways were, no one was passing the highways. Mm. People were using the panya route. Why? Mm. The fear and the terror of the enemy. Mm. The villages, no one was leaving the villages. Why? They are prone to attack. So people moved to the city. Mm. But when she looked at the problem and says, ah, it's not gonna remain this way. Mm. I, Deborah, arose as a mother. 
to deal with these kind of issues. Wow. So we are in a nation that is crying out about the corruption and about so many things. But how many mothers are there yeah. who can begin to say, Lord, I'm going to carry your burden on your heart and say, I'm going to push this until there is a restoration wow. in our Jerusalem. Wow. The scripture says in Isaiah, I have set watchmen over your walls who shall not be quiet, but they shall cry out day and night until I establish Jerusalem mm. of uh, praise on the earth. Mm. So there's so much that is going wrong. But we need mothers, mm. uh, people who can begin to, through their w spiritual womb, begin to bath what God is desiring to do in wow. our day and age. That's incredible. And again, speaks to um, the fact that even as women, we shouldn't be scrambling to compete with gentlemen, right? Because it is that the way God has formed us as women mm. with our wombs is what is he's going to actually use. Yes. So it's not about conforming ourselves and making ourselves be as aggressive or mm. be as headstrong mm. as whoever. She said a mother in, in Israel, Israel, not yes. even a warrior, but yes. a mother. A and mother. that through that, there's a certain grace yes. that comes with that as mm. well. Mm. And I think all of what you've pointed to, um, I think there's many points we could say about Deborah, but mm. one of the ones that's really standing out to me then is, is just this woman was courageous. Mm. And even with the description of her name being a bee, mm. you know, mm. very loving and caring, but at the same time, she mm. can hold it Fierce. down. Yes. You said she can sting. Because mm. <laughs> mm. mm. um, if you think about the role of a judge too, I mean, dealing with enemies. Mm -hmm. um, so, wow, I think uh, I'm very blessed by this conversation, especially coming from a man of God, mm -hmm. too. I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, just to show that, indeed, there's so much that we have limited ourselves with based on societal perceptions, mm -hmm. yet God is calling us to, maybe he's been waiting on us this whole time, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. to be the waiting women, mm -hmm. to be the ones crying out to him on behalf of our nations. Mm -hmm. So a call really for women to, to step up to the plate um, in every sense of the word. Thank you so much for sharing this Bible character with us. It's been very illuminating. And um, I just wanna ask you to pray for us as well. I think there's lots of things to pray for here. Um, the young generation of women that have, have kind of just gone in a different direction and maybe God is nowhere in the picture, zero ambitions as far as godly womanhood. Um, would you pray for that? Pray for the ones who are already in the church, mm. that indeed we would actually step up to the plate, but also pray for our gentlemen as well, that mm. they would be supportive of the women that God desires for us to actually be. Mm. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for you giving us this opportunity to share your word. And we thank you for the character, Deborah. The scripture says that the things that were written were written for us, for our learning. And Lord, you have taught us so much through Deborah this day. And I pray for the sisters, I pray for the women, that God of Israel, just like Mary, will be said, be it unto me according to your word. Mm. That the women will begin to receive your word and begin to yearn for that to be done in their lives. Mm -hmm. I pray that Lord, you will replace any a desire that they have in their hearts that is not of you. Father, you are able to give a new heart. Mm. Give them the heart that desires what you desire for them mm -hmm. and not their ambitions and not their visions, oh God, but your vision for their lives in the mm. name of Jesus. I pray for us men, Father, that we will not be the people who oppress the women, who uh, receive a demonic mindset about women, mm -hmm. but that God of Israel will begin to see them in the light that you created them. That these are helpmates. These are people who carry your treasure. Mm -hmm. These are people who have the spirit of God in them. And that Lord, you desire to do great and awesome things through them. Father, we pray that where we need to offer support, we will offer support. We pray that Lord, where we have injured the women among us, the mothers among us, the Father, you would forgive us and heal us, and that we will begin again to minister through our words and through our lifestyle so that there would be a healing to the women. We pray for this nation, Father, that again we will begin to hear mothers, mothers in Kenya, mm -hmm. mothers in Kenya, people who will seek your face like Anna did until Jesus is born and secured, oh God. Raise such women for us in this day and in this generation. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, someone here is saying, good morning, Joyce. What I've learned from Deborah is that I should not allow my feelings of um, qualification, I guess low qualification or something, mm. to keep me from stepping into the role that God has for me. Mm. And she says, Deborah in the Bible did not question God's voice or wonder what others will say or think, but she had the faith to do what God told her to do. That's Sarah watching from Karatina. Thank you very much for mm. that message. Thank you once again to you. And uh, remind us again how people can reach you. I know you have some books out as well. <laughs> how can they get a hold uh, of them? Let's, uh... 
uh, touch base or through Facebook, okay. Julius Blessed. Mm -hmm. uh, blessed is B L E S T. From there, we can we can communicate further. Great, great. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. And with that said, we're going to take a break now. Coming up next, we have a lot of music on the way for you. And uh, stay tuned. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. We'll be back after this. <laughs> 